Basically, anywhere else in the Bible would for some reason be translated even, as if it is drawing a consistent parallel between two concepts. What it says in the King James, starting at verse 15, so that you understand it, this is him closing his letter. In fact, let's start at verse 11 so we can get the context. You see how large a letter I've written to you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and with your spirit. Amen. So in the King James, it is as many as walk according to this rule, the rule being that neither circumcision avails anything or uncircumcision, as many as walk by that rule, the new creatures who look only to Christ, peace be on them and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Now we just read from Romans Paul's attitude toward Israel. I would wish myself to be accursed if it could save my kinsmen in the flesh. Paul wishes that all of Israel could be saved. Nowhere does Paul ever use the word Israel and ever refer to Israel <clears throat> as anything other than Israel. Whenever Paul uses the word Israel, being an Israelite, he always means Israel. And so here at the close of his letter, he puts out this little prayer that as many as walk according to the rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. That's his prayer. It's consistent with what he wrote in Romans 9. So the NIV took a, a replacement theology position and took Kai to mean even the Israel of God, meaning it was the same two groups. Of people. Meaning those two groups are the one in oh, the same group. Man, that's awful. So suddenly you've got as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy, even the Israel of God. Oh. Therefore, everybody who walks by that rule that neither circumcision or uncircumcision avails for anything, everybody who walks by that rule is now the Israel of God, according to that interpretation. And anybody got that in your translations? Anybody got even? Yeah, you got the NIV with the even in there? As long as you know that it is the Greek word chi, then you know that this verse, I mean, that Galatians 6.16, every church replacement theologian out there rushes to that verse, and they all quote the NIV, so that they can say, everybody who lives by this rule is now the Israel of God. Again, I said, if you can just pull the rugs out from under or pull the legs, the three basic legs out from under Israel church theology, it falls apart. One of these legs, please understand, is standing on the interpretation of a little Greek conjunction, chi. And if it's and, then that's two separate groups, and it's consistent with what Paul wrote in Romans 9. If it's even, then the church replacement theologians have a place to run. So... It, it, that's why you need to know it's Kai. It's and, it's then, and they for some reason at that point decided to make it a corollary, even the Israel of God. But every church replacement theologian who uses that text to try to prove their point won't tell you that the interpretation of that little conjunction is up for grabs. And that nobody knows that even is the proper interpretation because Kai is such a small Greek conjunction. So again, I keep insisting that if, in fact, Paul meant to say that the church is Israel and Israel is the church, if he meant to say, I mean, think about how cataclysmic that would be to his first century Israelitish audience to say, oh, by the way, Gentiles who believe in Christ are now Israelites, considering that Paul resisted when the people from James came to Galatia and said, in order to be a genuine Christian, you have to be Judaistic. So the Judaizers came and said, you need to be circumcised. You need to keep the law in order to be a genuine Christian. Paul withstood them. He said he didn't give them place, not for an hour, but resisted them for the way that they came in and tried to infiltrate Galatia. And yet we're supposed to believe that that same Paul who resisted the Judaizers, that same Paul would later say, now Gentiles who believe in Christ are Israelites. 
That makes no sense at all. And yet that is the essence of the church Israel replacement theology. Now, we've just pulled the three major legs out from under their stool. You pull those three out, they've got very little to work with. Turn to Ephesians 2, we'll look at that real quick, because that's typically the fourth place they'll go. Once you get these four cleared up in your head, you won't ever fall for a church Israel replacement theology ever again. Ephesians 2. In Ephesians 2, according to this article I've been reading from, in Ephesians 2, those who were formerly outside Israel, in verse 11, are now no longer outside, in verse 13 and 19. Those once excluded from citizenship in Israel, verse 12, are now fellow citizens with the saints, or the Jews, and members of God's household, not two households. And then, right from there, he goes to, the church is called Israel, Galatians 6.16, so the argument is that in Ephesians 2, well, let's read it, and then, and then we'll get into the argument. Now we can start right at the top of it. You have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of our mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he has loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in the past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by them which are called the circumcision with the flesh made of hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel." And strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. He's writing to Gentiles, clearly. And he's saying, now in times past, we all walked according to our flesh. And in times past, you walked like heathen. You walked like Gentiles. You walked like, what's your translation have? You used to walk like... You were all Gentiles by birth. They called them circumcised by those who called them circumcised. Okay, the good. They even went with the right translation. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so the idea being, in the past, you were Gentiles in your flesh. And because you were Gentiles, the uncircumcision, you were called that by the circumcision, the Jews that had the physical fleshly circumcision. At that time, verse 12, you were without Christ. They wouldn't argue with that. And you had no conversation or communication or uh, religion of God because you were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. The division is very clear here. And strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. That was the natural state of Gentiles outside of Israel. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometime were afar off are made close by the blood of Christ. Close to what or close to whom is the question now? Close to what? Close to God. Close to God. That's the subject. You were without God in the world, but now in Christ you who were afar off from God are made close by the blood of Christ. The Israel Church Replacement theologian will say, what Paul is saying here is you used to be strangers from the commonwealth of Israel, but now through Christ, you're brought close into Israel. You're now made part of Israel. For he, verse 14, for he is our peace, and he has made both one. Who is both there? Both what? Both who? Gentile. Jew and Gentile, exactly right. Israelite and Gentile. He has made both one, has broken down the middle wall of partition that was between us, that separated us. Now he tells us what that wall was between Jew and Gentile. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in...